Hi, my name's Lou Weaver. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm going to get to talk to you today about my Transvisible program. We started in the Lone Star State because I live in Houston, Texas, and I lived through the Houston Equal Rights Ordinance fight. What we saw was that people were miscategorizing who transgender folks were, and they did this thing, the no men and women's bathrooms. We knew we needed to reshape the narrative on who transgender folks were. So we started our campaign in Houston with a photographer friend of mine taking pictures of everyday transgender folks. We went through and we knew we needed to highlight diverse folks. We needed to highlight those that have not had their voices heard. We had Monica, Didi, and Reagan come out, and then we had Ana Andrea bring her chicas, as she calls them, from the organization Latina Trans in Tejas. They shared their voices, they were vulnerable, and they went out there. The unique thing about these women in the bottom right-hand corner is that a lot of them are undocumented. So sharing their stories for me was very difficult because I feared that I was putting them in danger, but it was important. On March 31st last year, on Trans Visible Day, we had a uh, showing in an art gallery. We had over 125 people show up. It was standing room only, and they listened to a moderated panel of folks talk about what it was like to be transgender in Houston and what all of this meant. So many of the people that showed up to listen to us had never met or listened to a transgender person before. It was so amazing. Becca on the end. <laughs> My friend Becca on the end also was speaking as a non-conforming person, so that was a huge talk that we had never had before, talking about non-binary identities. In May, I got a phone call from Kimberly Shapley. Kimberly's daughter um, was being attacked. She was at that point in time, five years old, about to enter kindergarten in the Pearland ISD. Kimberly had never met another transgender person before, but within two hours of having a phone call with me, I had her at our local Fox station going on TV because that's what we do. <laughs> Kimberly is now um, our faith, one of our faith, or, faith organizers. She's a, a born-again Christian, um, born a Republican, and she is a huge spokesperson, and her story and Kai's story has gone viral. So against everything that everybody told us, we knew we needed to use parents. We knew that our youth was being attacked. Ken Paxton was actually going around Texas and trying to find, and they were, he was shopping and succeeded in, in finding a school district to go against trans youth. In the end of May last year, we had our first ever conference seek, um, featuring transgender parents, three mama bears and a papa bear, talking about how these bills were gonna directly impact their youth. We knew this needed to happen and we started making it happen. We knew that Dallas had a, a trans group that had a group of folks for um, parents that had over 200 parents that were talk, coming together and talking. We went up there, we had, started having conversations, we started giving them messaging training, storytelling training. And then in Dallas, we also held a press conference. These parents were ready, willing, and able to stand up and talk about what it was like to raise transgender children across the state of Texas. This happened last year and it's paid dividends on and on for us. We have been in El Paso with Audrey talking about what it was like to be kicked out from his home when he was coming home from having his top surgery. This is us at Transgender Lobby Day where over th about 300 people showed up on a trans-specific day in Texas to lobby against anti-transgender bills. We held our second Transgender Leadership Institute in Dallas. We, in we partnered with the Freedom for All Americans, TLC and NCTE both came in, the ACLU was also present. We had 50 people show up to talk about racial justice, intersectionality, messaging, storing, telling, and our next steps in the state of Texas. They worked together, they talked about hard conversations that were led by TLC, and they came away with not only all of these skills, but the feeling of family and bonding and togetherness that we could not have replicated any other way. We pushed people, people were willing to go outside of their comfort zones. Ken Ballard on the left here is my personal hero. He is such an introvert, he hates speaking in public, but in a three minute video uh, shot on an iPhone, he talked about what it was like to be a dad of a transgender youth, his story about coming out with his child and how he had a child to help him get his, the child, help, help the child achieve his um, reality. Ken's vi video has gone viral, CNN, CNN National, about 2.5 million views. Ethan, back up one, sorry. Uh, Ethan uh, was, is on Scruff as a gay bear, and he said, Scruff, how about highlight, highlighting a trans man? Here's Ethan on Scruff Tuesday. If anybody knows what that means, I don't, but he was highlighted. 
This is actually during SB6. So as we're at the Capitol for SB6 uh, hearing, Ethan scruff cuffs going off because everybody's seeing this boy. Um, again, outside of his comfort zone. We've had so many people, because of the, their, their ability to stand up, come out, and the TLI that we've had, all of these folks, this is, every picture is at the state capitol of people coming and continuing to come to our, our capitol. And I just want to say that all of the videos are making a difference. Thank you.